What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be bringing you another skin retouch video. So I know you're probably thinking, oh, another one. But this one is a little bit different than the first one. So we're using a little bit different techniques and some actually, some probably some better techniques that I've learned along the way. So I thought I'd bring you another video. You can't go wrong with a skin retouch video, can you? You know, they're pretty, they're pretty actually informative. I, uh, I found, you know, I watch other people's ones and I learn stuff from them. So I'm basically bringing this all together and I'm going to give you another good video. So thank you for all the support on the content recently you know all the likes all the support subscribes everything it really does mean a lot to me thank you so much let's get straight into the video so guys we got a picture of Jason Tatum here now I'm gonna take it from looking like this to looking like that so as you can see there is a big difference yeah big difference so this is something that you know I've learned along the way but um, there's quite a few steps to this so let's get straight into it now as you can see with this one it's a little bit red it's a little like the shadows look really good highlights look really good um, the eyes look really stand out obviously I've used the white thing that we've done before so I'll go through that quickly when we get to that stage but really this is all about getting the skin tones to look really cool and especially after you add your camera or filter effect at the end um, it'll look even better so Let's get straight into it without uh, rambling on a little bit. So let's just bring this above the group. Let's just leave that there for reference. So we've got our image. Now, as you can see, it's quite yellowy, you know, not looking great, a little bit flat. So what we're going to do first, we're going to add a camera or filter. So we're not going to do neural filters on this one because we want to keep the noise in. So we've got a camera or filter going on here. As you can see, I got this image off Getty Images. And what we're going to do now is we are going to apply a previous setting that I already have here. Now, don't get me wrong. This looks a little bit, you know, bad at the moment i agree it looks pretty bad at the moment uh, but this is what i've done so i've added probably about 20 texture you could probably reduce the clarity to about 15 just because that's something that makes it look quite dark um dehaze is about eight the main one is the highlights and contrast so bring the contrast up you want to bring the shadows out you know you want to make sure that they're looking strong highlights up shadows down and that's that for the basic tab so you can copy that or you can obviously you know make it specific to the design that you're working on um so that's fine no nothing on curves and then for sharpening sometimes i do add a bit of sharpening but you can add probably about a 10 because the noise reduction you can add obviously once you uh, finish your design that's all you need to do for the camera or filter stage it's pretty basic i don't want to keep on but yeah that's it obviously you can copy that do what you want and make sure it looks good on your design so let's click OK there. So now we've got our first step. So it looks a little bit better already. Um, the background, you know, obviously it's gone, so it looks a little bit better. A little bit better. So I'm going to convert that to a smart object. Get rid of all that. OK, so the first step is going to be the uh, eyes. So we're going to set up a new curves layer quickly. I know you probably most of you know how to do this, but I'm just going to do it quickly. So curves adjustment layer, it's going to be here. Going to just make a nice highlight, invert the mask, Command I or Control I if you're on a Windows, and obviously zoom in. You want to find where the eyes are, and we're just going to go and get a hard brush, and we're just going to paint in where the eyes are. So just get your white color selected, paint in. You can see what I'm doing pretty simply. Uh, just paint in where his eyes are. Same on both sides, like so. And then obviously we're going to go over the teeth as well because the teeth look so much better when they're white as well, as you will have seen in my designs. So we've got that there, go through the back through the middle so it's not white there. So that's all done. So now we're going to create a hue and saturation layer. So click that, clip and mask it to it. And now you're just going to drag this layer mask that you got here onto the, uh, the hue and saturation layer. So hold Alt when you do this so you can duplicate it. So let's do that. Uh, replace layer mask, uh, click yes. So that's that. Now what we're going to do is go to the saturation layer and click zero saturation. Now it's all black and white. So now what we can do is we can paint back in uh, where the color in the eye is. So let's go and do that. Change your color to black. Bring your color back in for the eyes. Same again here. So now we've got that all done. We don't really need to worry about the teeth. But you, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to redrag this layer mask onto the curves layer. Because I don't want the eyes to be glowing for the next step that we're going to do now. So what you're going to need to do now is you're going to create a uh, brightness and contrast layer. Clip and mask that to him. And what you're going to do is increase the brightness to 100%. So I know it looks a little bit odd to begin with, a little bit odd. So you're going to do the same again, invert the mask so it's black. And this time we're going to zoom in and we're going to go just on the eyes. So like you did painting the color back in, this time we're just going to go on the eyes. So I'm going to get my brush tool, if I can. Um, and then I'm not going to paint up here. All right, I'm going to get my brush. I'm going to paint up here. Just get rid of that. Sorry, that mistake I made. And then we're just going to paint in his eyeball. So as you can see, this is making the eye look a lot brighter. 
but also if we zoom out it makes it look a lot more intense and a lot more cooler so just so you know guys this is something new I've learned I don't usually do this with the center of the eye but as you can see it makes it look so much better um, so that's something I've started doing a lot more so the eyes are done you don't need to worry about the eyes anymore that's all done so that's <laughs> that's good um, we can group that together to be honest and just group it like that eyes now the next thing is going to be brightness and contrast so what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna hold command or control on a Windows over your thumbnail here and just gonna click it and when you do this it's gonna come up with your marching ant so this is a selection you've made all the way around um, basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select some specific colors so we're gonna go to select up the top and then we go down to color range click OK and what you're gonna do now is you're gonna where it says sample colors you're gonna go down to highlights so once you've clicked highlight, you've got this nice little selection here. So fuzziness, I usually have this about 50 or 40 around there. And then highlights, I usually try and pick them out. So you want to make sure you get a good selection of this. So around the top here. So something like that is good. Um, you don't want to make it obviously too much, but around 230 is probably good. Um, and then as you can see, once we click OK, it's selected all of these light areas on his face. So it's not too much, but it's enough to make you know a good selection. So down here, down here on his kit, over here on his hair. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a brightness and contrast layer. So now the brightness and contrast layer has that selection on it, on this layer mask. Just like that, you've got your highlights all selected. So what you're gonna do is if I increase this brightness now, you can see it's really brightening the highlights. So I usually bring this up to about 40, maybe maybe 30, depending on the image. Reduce the contrast a little bit. And then the key to this, guys, is to making it look like it's blended in properly, is going over to where it has a layer mask here. So click the layer mask, and then you'll see this density and feather. Now you wanna bring the feather probably up to about, probably about six or seven. So once you add the feather, this will make it look a lot more realistic, because it all, it like fades it all in, and just makes it look more natural. Um, so once you've done that, as you can see, just makes it look a little bit more cool to look at, you know, a bit more interesting. So we're going to do the same again now. So we're going to go and select our image. So command or control, click, get your marching ants around the outside, go to select color range, and then we're going to go find the shadows. So the shadows, again, probably, probably around, about here, it's usually where I find them. Um, so it's these little white bits here, uh, like down here maybe maybe reduce it down a little bit more actually so somewhere around 96 is probably good get a good selection click ok and now as you can see it's selected all the shadows down here his beard his hair you know under the ball under his arms certain parts of the kit and we're going to do the same again and we're just going to get a brightness and contrast layer and click ok now for this one you're going to want to reduce the brightness down obviously because you're bringing out the shadows like so so i'm going to bring this down to about 40 increase the contrast to about 20 now, as you can see, this looks very uh, dark now. Maybe maybe reduce the contrast to about 10. And then same again, go to your mask bit, click feather, and bring this up to about, probably about 7 for this one. Now, let's turn this on and off, just see how dark it's actually making it. That's pretty good. Once you uh, get to the last stage anyway, guys, it might look a little bit dark once you've got to the last stage, but don't worry, because we'll be lightening it back up, basically. So, there's our, hi uh, our you know highlights, highlights and shadows. It's looking a lot more dynamic now, isn't it? So let's uh, group that together, highlight. Let's just call it that for now. Now the next thing we're gonna do is add a selective color. Now this is where you start to bring the skin tones together and make make sure that you can match your you know your subject. So you'll have two, you maybe you'll have two, three, four. I don't know how many you have in your design. Maybe you'll only have one. But if you wanna match these skin tones, this is the best way to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the adjustments layer, selective color. And now we're going to go to where it is uh, over here, select red. Now for the first bit, we're going to bring this black up to about 32. Now, as you can see by doing this, it makes it quite dark. Um, so the main thing about this is don't worry if it looks too dark or dynamic. At the end, we're going to boost it back up. So bring the yellows up to about minus one, probably, probably about minus five, I'd say, minus three, around there. Magentas, we can bring this up to about plus four because once we uh, add a few more steps, we'll be doing this again, so it'll make it even more intense. And then this, we can bring this to about minus five. 
So that's the reds done. Already it's looking quite cool. Now we're going to go to yellows. And now for the yellows, we're going to bring the blacks down for this one. So we're going to bring this down to about minus 16 because we don't want too much yellow in the skin. For this design, I want it to look a bit more pinky, a little more dynamic, so it'll look a lot cooler. Okay, for the yellows, we're going to reduce this to about minus 5. Magenta's probably about plus 3, plus 3 again. And then Cyan's about minus, minus 7, I think. We'll leave that. So that's perfect. So if we turn this on and off now, you can already see that it's making it a little bit more redder, a little bit darker, but just overall a little bit cooler so you know it, it's little things but they do make a difference so take the time to do your skin retouching it'll make it look so much better trust me okay guys so on to the next step this is going to be another key step so this is going to be dodge and burn you obviously will have known this before i even have a tutorial on my channel it's very old now but you know it's still a tutorial if you guys are stuck on it so i'm gonna make a new layer edit um fill and then it's going to be 50 percent gray click ok so we've got our layer now and then you're going to change this to overlay and now your dodge and burn tools are going to be over here so this is dodge and that one's burn so i'm going to do burning first burning is obviously shadows um so you're going to just go where your shadows are uh just go in and just go over them you, know, you don't need to do this too much but you know do it enough so it's it's basically making it look uh pop out so making the creases look a little bit more real you know making them look a bit more intense just certain things that will make you know the whole image look better especially once you add the uh, final camera or filter obviously when you finish the overall design it'll make these stand out even more and it'll just make it all look a little bit better together so we've got that you can obviously go down the skin tones as well on the proper dark areas if you want to but i i wouldn't recommend doing too much on the skin because it makes it quite red um so that's about that for that you can do a little bit in the eyes here so like that something like that around here don't have to do too much though guys don't worry about doing it on the face too much like here okay so we've got it going down there so now if i zoom out and if i just go like that you can see it's really added another extra element to it and now we're going to do the dodge tool and this is uh the highlights so you can go over the highlights on the skin if you want to on the ball as well just to add an extra you know level to it uh, this the kit I don't usually go over too much you can go over the kit if you can find highlighted areas like here just bits that you want to brighten up basically like something like this go down there just little bits like that but don't don't overdo it on the kit because it, it tends to look a little bit odd in my uh, my experience so mainly here I go around the face over the highlights on the face because quite a few something like that that's good and then around the hair as well if you want to so let's turn this on and off yep you can definitely see the change we've made looks a lot better i think so we're going to do that now and group these together dodge and select so that's selective color and dodge so the next thing we're going to do is add a levels layer so when when i was saying earlier about the darkness and if it's too dark for you uh this is where you can brighten it up so what we're going to do now is we're going to add a levels layer so let's go down here click levels now you don't need to do anything with this you just need to move this one up to probably about 1.20 so 1.20 looks a lot brighter doesn't it it looks a lot nicer cleaner now if it's too bright you can obviously reduce it down again but i think that's pretty pretty decent because obviously once you add it into your design you can add your dynamic lighting and everything and you know bring it in a little bit more so the last thing guys i know i've sort of sped through this video a little bit but i don't know if it's gone quick for you or not but the last thing is going to be another selective color okay guys so the next thing we're going to do is add the selected color so this is the final part this is going to be where it's nice and pink and you know not pink but like you know quite red and warm so the first thing is going to be black so that's plus 20. the next thing is going to be minus 30 for the yellow so this is where the pink comes in as you can see so the magenta probably 10 so this is where it gets real pink and then minus 15 for the cyan so as you can see yeah it's a little bit too intense at the moment yellows what we're going to do now is we're going to go for a minus 10 on the cyan magenta I, you could probably bring this up a tiny bit on the yellows yellow <clears throat> we're going to bring this down to yellow we're going to boost this up to plus 12 so this is where you bring some more of the warmth back in so it's a little bit more um uh realistic so it's not just just pink and then the black we're going to bring this to about let's see probably about about minus seven i'd say yeah that's good that's much better okay guys so i think that is the final step that i've got for you um 
I hope you have enjoyed this video. You know, I, I've tried to keep it too, not, not too short, but I've tried to keep it informative so you've actually learned something and, you know, got something out of it. I know I did another skin retouch video recently, but I thought this one was just too good to pass up on. And there's so many different techniques that you can learn in this that aren't in the other skin retouch. Obviously, go watch that one if you haven't, but this one's got a load of different ones which you can use in different designs. So hopefully you have learned something from it, you know, I'm trying my best to bring you some new content and obviously keep you guys learning along with the post tutorials and everything so yeah hopefully you have enjoyed um so that is all of it guys thank you so much for watching this video if you have enjoyed obviously smash that like button if you haven't enjoyed you know let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see differently you know i'm open to suggestions so let me know um and that that's about it guys so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time